Hello students, this is Fadan Mirza. We are discussing transport and plants and the focus of our approach in this part will be the transportation of water and how xerophytes have certain adaptations which uh, help them with minimizing the water losses. So transporting water, these are the five main things that you have to keep in mind when we are discussing transport of water. Although they are listed in the reverse order, water movement begins from the soil and by the time it goes to the atmosphere. So this is a, this is this happens first and then this and then this, then this, then this. But we study that in the reverse order. When we study that in the reverse order, we actually try to grasp the concept that it is the transpiration pull. Transpiration, which is the movement of these water vapors from the from the uh, aerial parts of the plant to the atmosphere, which pulls the water across the xylem and into the leaf. This draws the water from the root to the stem in xylem, which in turn cause the root hair cell to allow water to go into the xylem and in turn more water from the soil enters the root hair cell. So these are the five things that we'll be discussing here, starting off with transpiration. So what is transpiration? In transpiration, you already know that spongy mesophyll cells, these cells, they have air spaces and these air spaces allow water vapor, which is present on the outer surface, uh, to go out to the stomatal pore. These water vapors, which are moving out, this is transpiration and they move out through the stomatal opening and stoma, you can recall, is made up of, is basically a pore in the epidermis guarded by a pair of guard cells. And this is the only pathway which connects the internal air with the external atmosphere. And this happens when water potential in their space, in the air space is higher as compared to the water potential outside. What's transpiration? This is the loss of water vapor from a plant to its environment, simply by diffusion down a water potential gradient. Most transpiration takes place through this tomato in the leaves. We do not use the term of concentration of water molecules anywhere else. So these are the five steps which are happening in the in 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 the movement of uh, water. You can just probably go through go through these. These are very simple. So what are the what's happening when when transpiration occurs? Most of the plants they have stomata on the underside or on the lower surface of the leaf, which allows the water to go out as vapors. If they were present on the upper surface, there would have been extensive loss of water vapor due to, due to direct exposure to sunlight. So this is avoided by stomata being the, on the lower surface. Factors which affect the rate of transpiration, there are external factors which include the humidity in the air. Obviously we, are, we mean that outside the, in the outer atmosphere, the wind speed around the plant, the light intensity that the plant is facing, very dry conditions prevailing outside the plant and the temperature outside the plant. So these are the factors which ensure or which control the rate of transpiration. So factors which affect rate of transpiration can be, uh, can be you can just uh, find that uh, the effect, you can find that out using a potometer. Water supply cannot be, uh, uh, cannot be, do, cannot be done because your, this is a limitation here. But apart from that, you can, you can carry out various uh, settings. You can put this potometer in various settings to note down how the rate of transpiration is different from one environment to the other. What's a potometer? This is a potometer device. Here you have a leafy shoot. It would lose water through vapors into the air. More water will be drawn from this, from this glass tubing. This glass tubing is having water. This is a water reservoir. You just turn the tap on so the water can fill up here. And the meniscus of the water level can be noted from this scale. The direction of water meniscus movement will be here along this arrow as more water will be drawn. So you can just note down the time taken for the water to be lost at certain uh, and known time, how much distance does it cover or how much time is it taking to cover the known distance and this can be used by the uh, stopwatch can be used and accordingly rate can be worked out. Zero fights. Zero fights are plant which are adapted to grow in extremely limited water supply. For example, cactus or aloe vera or marum grass. This is the cut section of a marum grass. You can see these, these uh, large air spaces and the cells and these needle-like structures. These are inside, these are called trichomes. More on this later. This is a cactus. 
uh, you are very familiar with cactus. In cactus, there are flattened stems which uh, which store water. They have they have a gel like substance inside them, and the leaves are reduced to thorns. These this reduces the uh, surface area for the sunlight sunlight exposure. So water loss is minimized. Plus these thorns these prevent the uh, uh, this plant from being eaten by the herbivores. This is the cut section of your madam grass. In madam grass, the leaf folds. And that this is the lower epidermis. This lower epidermis is very thick. It lacks uh, stomata. It is having thick cuticle. There are lignified cells for support, and there are hinge cells which 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 control the rolling of this leaf. As they become more flaccid, the leaf rolls. So this end and this end can be pulled apart. So this where this leaf can be flattened out, but it rolls over itself in such a way that it curls. When it curls, the upper epidermis goes in, and you can see that the upper epidermis is folded. It's having numerous folds, and the lower epidermis, which was having thick cuticle, it comes outside because of this rolling, and this is because the hinge cell, these blue ones, these be they they become flaccid. So as the leaf gets more flaccid, it rolls even more, and it rolls tightly, and it shuts down the uh, stomatal opening from getting access directly with the external environment, which is here. These are the trichomes. These trichomes, these trichomes, they allow the moisture to be captured back if the stomata, the sunken stomata, lose water. The sunken stomata are here inside these grooves, inside these pits. The upper epidermis, this is the one which is having the um, stomata, and here, the, since the leaf got rolled, so the trichomes which are having here, these are hair-like extensions. They trap moisture back into the leaf, so water is not allowed to escape. Even in scanty water supply, they can very well live. So you can see these are the xylem, and this is the phloem of a vascular bundle. And if you look closely, so these actually are the emoticons laughing at you because you really can can't make sense of how the zero fights are working. So okay, that was a joke. So structural features, the uh, structural features of the of your of your zero fights and their adaptation, which already have been discussed. So now we have got now we now that we have discussed transpiration, let's move on to how water is moving from xylem and it moves across the leaf from xylem, the unlignified parts of the xylem and into the leaf. So as the transpiration is occurring, water is lost, and as water is lost, more water will be drawn out of the xylem from the unlignified parts, which are the pits. And these pits were initially the plasmodesmata in the xylem. So more water will be replaced. In that xylem, and water keeps going out through these pits. As the water goes out from xylem into these cells of the leaf, water spreads out by two pathways: symplastic pathway or apoplastic pathway. What is symplastic pathway? Water moves by crossing each and every part of the cell, which includes the cell membrane and the vacuoles and the cytoplasm and everything which is present inside the cell, as well as the plasmodesma. So when it's crossing the membrane, it's by crossing by osmosis. When it's crossing plasmodesma, it's crossing by diffusion. Apoplastic pathway is water moving through from one cell to the other through diffusion only because it's moving through the cell walls. It's not entering the cell at all, so it just moves from one cell to cell through the cell walls only. And since there is no living part involved here, that that's just plainly diffusion occurring here, and this is how the water is moving. So uh, this is how the xylems are. These are extra lignin deposited. This is the xylem, and these are sclerin gamma fibers. These are the pits of the xylem through the unlignified parts. So when water is going from these parts to the uh, apoplastic and symplastic, as I have just outlined, what's happening further? Water starts to move from the roots to the stem. Water starts to rise up to the leaf. How's that happening? This is happening because the water is moving from xylem to the leaf cells. This reduces the hydrostatic pressure at the top of the uh, that xylem. Now, since the hydrostatic pressure at the top is reduced, the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of the xylem will be higher. Because there is more to more water potential there, so water starts to rise up the xylem. This is very much the same thing that happens when you are taking, when you are actually having a drink through a straw. The beverage goes into your mouth because you reduce the hydrostatic pressure at the top, and the water and the drink just goes in your mouth. So this is the same thing happening here. Water starts to rise into the xylem because at the top there is less hydrostatic pressure. At the low, at the bottom part, there is more hydrostatic pressure because of higher water potential there. So water moves by mass flow. What's mass flow? Water will move together with all the dissolved solutes which are there, and they will all travel together as a single body. And they, when they travel, there are two bonds which are of importance here. Number one, cohesion. Number two, adhesion. 
these are both hydrogen bonds. Cohesion bonds are hydrogen bonds between the water molecules which are adjacent to one another and adhesion are the bonds between the, or you can say attraction between the water molecules and the and the surrounding, uh, you can say lignin and cellulose. These can be hydrogen bonds and these can be other electrostatic forces as well. So water moves as a continuous column up the xylem and when the water is moving as a continuous column, an air lock may form because of an, because of an air bubble coming in between. Now when an air lock forms, that xylem vessel will not be able to transport water up anymore. It allows the water to go out in the surrounding xylem through the pits, through the plasmodesma. And when the water goes out, the air bubble cannot go out. So this, this prevents the air, the air, the air lock from, from moving along the xylem. The plasmodesma allows the water to move out, but the air bubble stays trapped here. So transport of water from roots to leaf is primarily passive, occur without ATP, and it, it occurs in dead plants as well. Since the xylem is having a narrow lumen, air lock doesn't uh, form at all. But even if it happens, if it, it if it ends up forming, so the plant can just resolve it by moving it, uh, by crisp, by keeping it within the xylem and allowing the water to go out through the unlignified part. Root pressure is not very significant transport of water up the xylem, but here what's happening, solutes and ions are actively pumped into the xylem first. This lowers the water potential in that region inside that xylem, and then more water is drawn into it by osmosis. Uh, and when water goes in, this is root pressure. When water is moving from root hair cell, or you can say from root hair to xylem, how's that happening? Xylem is present in the central part of the root and normally it's shaped, it's arranged in a star-shaped structure, or you can say it resembles a star-shaped structure in the center of the root. So water from the root hair cell pass across all those to all the parts of the tissue of the cortex and then comes into the xylem either through the root hair cell or through the epidermis and comes, it comes into the xylem and goes on. So when water is moving, how the water is transported, water take two pathways as discussed previously, either the uh, symplastic pathway or the apoplastic pathway. The symplastic pathway and apoplastic pathway, apoplastic is through the cell wall, cell wall only, diffusion alone, no living part involved here. Symplastic pathway, the cell living part, the membranes will be involved, this will be osmosis. If it goes to the plasmodesma, that will be diffusion. So what's happening in endodermis? Once the water crosses the root, it comes into the endodermis. Indeed, in the endodermis, there are cells which are suburized. Partially, they are suburized. A caspian strip is deposited in the cell wall. This, is, this strip is, is a band of suberin. It prevents the movement of water through the apoplastic pathway. So the water can only enter through the symplastic pathway. As the, words, as the cell grows older, more and more suberin gets deposited and the cell becomes blocked altogether. A blocked cell will not allow water to move either by symplastic or apoplastic. And the passage cell, which is having suberin deposited in Casparian strip, it allow movement of water through the symplastic pathway only. So endodermis, the endodermis block cells will not allow movement of water by any pathway, but the passage cells, they allow the movement of water through the symplastic pathway, preventing the apoplastic pathway. Now, what is the importance of this? Probably you can just uh, recall the properties of cell membrane and try to grasp what's happening here. Water moving from soil to root hair cell, how that's happening, the epidermal cells or the root hair cells, they have a lower water potential and when they have a lower water potential due to an increased uptake of ions primarily the minerals which include the nitrate ions they lower the water potential and when the water potential is lower water moves by osmosis and when water moves by osmosis down the water potential gradient this is simply the symplastic pathway so this is root pressure as well so root hair cells they provide a large surface area for the absorption of water this extension it allows more water to be absorbed the cell membrane of the root hair cells have membrane proteins, transmembrane proteins or uh, transport proteins which are called aquaporins. Aquaporins, these are the proteins which allow water to, these are water permeable channels. They allow water to enter through facilitated diffusion, crossing the membrane and entering into the cell. So aquaporins are present there as well. And some plants have an additional uh, organism called mycorrhiza. These are fungi in the roots of those certain plants. These absorb phosphate and water from the soil and deliver it to the roots while the roots uh, provide shelter and nutrients to the fungi mycorrhiza. This is an example of mutualism. So if we just see these are the soil particles and around the soil particle, there will be a lot of moisture content here. So when the, when the water is being absorbed, so how the water will be absorbed, I'm just using the, these different colors to annotate, to add, to, to, uh, to just make sure that you get the concept well. So this water is around the soil particles here. This, so this root hair cell is extending through the soil particles here. 
Now water starts to move by the apoplastic pathway. So you can see this is the apoplastic pathway, water moving by apoplastic pathway from cell wall to cell wall. And as it moves by apoplastic pathway, you can see that this is just the diffusion of water from the apoplastic pathway. This will continue till the water reach the endodermis where the apoplastic pathway will be blocked by the subarin deposits in the Casparian strip. This is the cytoplasm, this is the nucleus, and as you go ahead into the root, the water potential keeps decreasing. So initially, there's a higher concentration of ions here, water grows in, then there's a high concentration of ions here, water gets pulled here, and then there's a high concentration of ions here, water potential gets lowered, water goes in. And similarly, again, high concentration of ions here, so water keeps going here. This again, this is the symplastic pathway. So I have highlighted the apoplastic pathway in blue here and the symplastic pathway in orange here. This is how the water will keep on moving from the soil to the root hair cell and across the cortex. Eventually, it will reach xylem. And while it's crossing the endodermis, the uh, apoplastic and symplastic pathway, as we discussed previously, that they will be temporarily held. So the apoplastic pathway will be held by the by by the by the deposits of suberin, and symplastic will be allowed there. But when the uh, when the passive cells are blocked completely, the symplastic and apoplastic pathway will be blocked altogether. That's it from my side. Thank you so much.